Hey everyone, welcome to Jason Explains Things. It is time for another awesome Overland DIY video on my 2021 Toyota 4Runner. Now, one thing that I wish this truck had when it came from the factory is a front camera like those fancy pants 2022s. We don't like those ones, do we? We don't like that one. We don't like those 2022s, do we? No, we don't. Lucky for us, they're really easy and affordable to add after the fact. So today, you're going to get a demo of the front camera kit that I installed, a great place on where to get a good deal on one, and also really detailed instructions on how I did all of this. So, why do you need a front camera for your 4Runner Tacoma vehicle like that? Well, I'm gonna awkwardly hop into this, and I'll show you why. Don't fall. Ha! <sighs> Vehicles like the 4Runner, Tacoma, and others have really tall hoods and also sometimes non-functioning hood scoops that make seeing in your front of your vehicle hard pretty much at all times. When I am on a steep incline like this, if you're looking in my view right now, all I can see is the sky. But if you turn on your handy dandy new front camera, oh my gosh, hey, it's directly in front of my bumper. How, how convenient. And also a really cool thing about this kit is you can look behind yourself as well, which is nice. When you're not in reverse, you can still check what's directly behind you. So that's awesome. So let's jump back in time and I'll show you how to install this. Well, everyone, let's get this installed underway. It should be pretty easy. This kit is for 2020 and up. Mine's a 2021. Um, there is a 2019 and back version of this kit. You just wanna make sure to order the right one because you have different head units that this has to interact with. Now this kit is available from several different websites, but I bought it from CaliRaisedLED.com. If you choose CaliRaisedLED, check out my description for a discount code for 5% off this. Now I'm not sponsored by CaliRaised and I paid full price for this, but you don't have to. And if you use that discount code, I get a little kickback as well, which is very nice. And a nice way to say thank you, Jason, for helping me. <laughs> All right, let's go check out the tools we're gonna use to install this. All right, so we're gonna open this up and show you all the different parts in one second. But first off, I'm just gonna go over the tools. So first off, you're gonna need some uh, butt connectors. These are really cool and I'll have a link to them below because they actually, if you use a heat gun, there's a little bit of solder in between. So this is a really nice way to make your wiring really secure. And so we got those and we got end connectors too. We're gonna have to make one ground wire. So that's why this is here. Uh, we're gonna need a little bit of extra wire, a right angle drill or a, a drill with a right angle adapter will be really nice for drilling the hole into our front grill. Electrical tape, wire clippers. We're gonna have to run one thing through the firewall, so we're gonna use one of these. Heat gun, and that's it for tools. All right, let's open this up. So first off, here's your camera and the wiring for that. And there's your little guy. Boy. <laughs> a little bit of it. This is all the instructions you get. So it's good to watch a video about how to install this because this is all you're getting <laughs> out of the box. Here's the relay and the wiring for the back of the stereo. And then here is your cool switch, which looks very factory, which is really cool. So yeah, that's, that's the basics of the kit. I sort of cleaned my engine bay for you guys. <laughs> Okay, to get started on the install, first remove the radiator support cover. It's held in by these really cool clips. You simply push down on the center of the clip and then remove it. We're gonna fit a winch in there someday. Okay, time to drill our hole in the grill here to mount the camera. Um, a couple things to talk about. First off, as you see here, I do have a 2021, so I have the, the radar here for, I think, the adaptive cruise control. Several people have done this before. Mounting the camera like we plan on right here in the center is not going to interfere with this. Um, you're gonna want to measure and use this as your center like that and then we'll uh, do that and we'll mark a line and then we can use the actual camera itself to get our placement uh, front and back. All right, here we go. Point of no return, right? There you go. <laughs> Next step is to run the wire through the hole we just made. Now, I wanna quickly talk about this, and I'm not sure which one to use yet, but we, uh, the kit came with several different pad wedgie dealy bobs to control the angle, because uh, you, you don't want the camera to be facing too much down or too far forward, because then it kind of de defeats the purpose of its use. So I'm not sure which one of these to use yet. So we're just gonna loosely um, mount this, and once we have all our wiring done, we'll come back at the end and kind of decide which one of these awesome little pads 
we're gonna use. No, oh, that looks really cool. <laughs> Thread our nut down through. I'm not gonna tighten this down yet. I'm just gonna get it threaded, the nut threaded onto those threads. And you're not gonna get a shot of this, by the way. No? Because <laughs> it's all inside of here. <laughs> awesome, well we have loosely secured our camera in place and we have used some zip ties and drilled a couple tiny holes to run our wire through to here where we're gonna connect to the wiring harness that goes into the cab. So next, we're gonna run our wire through that factory uh, wiring grommet right there. So this is the wiring that we need to pass through the firewall. This is the side that goes into the cab. This is the side that goes uh, through the firewall. Now, it's gonna be a lot easier to push your rod through and then pull it back out, the, rather than trying to go the other direction. <laughs> this was the hard part. This part was pretty easy. This part wasn't, <laughs> but we got it through no problem. Next, I added some flexible cable tube to protect the wiring and make it look more factory. I snaked the protected wire behind the fuse box and battery and secured it with zip ties. Okay, until it's time to secure our camera and adjust its angle, we are done in the engine bay. Chris, let's tear my dash apart. All right. Let's do it. Cool, so we're gonna start right here, moving this way uh, to kind of loosen everything up so we can route our wires and install our switch. Oh, there we go. Remove the two 10 millimeter bolts holding the base of the dash in place. Awesome. Next, remove the two side trim panels in the center console. Simply squeeze the sides Beautiful. and they pop out. I'm gonna go ahead and remove my pedal commander for now. If you're interested in that, there's a video all about it. We'll just kind of tuck that down out of the way. Okay. Oh, I love, I love the way these are engineered. It's so cool. You don't need to completely remove this lower panel. Getting it loose on the top works just fine. Remove the panel next to your ignition. Oh. I'm installing my camera switch in this blank space. Using a trim tool, pop out your climate controls. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. I'm gonna shift into four wheel drive. There we go. <laughs> nice. Okay, next we remove our head unit, which are just four 10 millimeter bolts right there. All right, next, just grab from here. Pull down. Woo! Oh my. <laughs> Perfect. Routing our camera wire from the dash is really simple. What I did is I went in from here, now underneath the carpet, down under there, around here. I had to remove this kick panel, which is really, really simple. It just pops right out and then up to the switch location. Now, only note is you want to make sure that your wire does not touch that metal pipe right there because that is part of your heat system and can get really hot. Okay, we got everything as apart as we need. So now we're gonna start building everything back together. First thing is your your new camera relay. We're just going to zip tie this through the supplied hole just to the main wiring harness in the back. All right, we got two wiring harnesses from our kit that we need to install into the back of the head unit. This first one goes on the right, right here, and the second one with our RCA connections goes right here in the middle. Okay, we have our rear camera feed and our screen input. From our switch relay, we have three RCA inputs, two female and one male. The one with the mark is actually for your rear camera input. So that will go from here to here, if that makes sense. Woohoo. Our screen input will go in to this male right here. And the one remaining RCA female will go in to our front camera input RCA coming here, but we're gonna do that one in just a second. Tape all your camera connections together to prevent them from coming apart. So our one remaining RCA from the relay gets plugged into our front camera right here. The switch is gonna be installed in this crevice right there. Create a ground wire for the switch relay. Ground wire. Connect the ground wire to the relay, then ground it to the chassis. I'm using this 10 millimeter bolt on the side of the head unit. Okay, well, we've got all of the RCAs in the back of the of the unit um, done, and I've routed all the wires that I need to now connect to our switch wiring harness right here. So everything is here. So this is just pushed back, but not clipped in yet, but that way we can test everything and wire everything up. So 
This is gonna be a little bit confusing, but it's not that bad. So this is our new ground wire that we attached to the side of the, of the radio bracket. So this is what we're going to be attaching all of our different ground wires to. Okay, so we're gonna do all the ground wires first. Let me explain what each one of these is. This is our new ground wire from the radio bracket. This is a ground wire and it's black from the video relay. Then we have our ground wire from the camera outside. By the way, I did have to use a little bit of an extension on this to get enough um, wiggle room for that. And then we have our ground wire coming from our switch uh, wiring harness. So we just need to attach all these together. I secured all the ground wires together with a closed end crimp connector, electrical tape, and zip tie. Now I got confused during the install, but depending on if you got the regular or premium camera, there are some wires you don't need to hook up. The red and black leads coming from the engine bay aren't needed if you have the premium camera like I do. As I was editing this video, I realized I hooked up that ground wire and didn't need to. Not a huge problem, but I wanted to point it out so you don't make my mistake. We're in the home stretch now. Uh, last kind of confusing one is this one. So this is all for your, all your uh, positive power cables. We've got green, green being power just weirds me out, but it's okay. Uh, green from the relay, which is power from the relay. Green from the switch, which is this right here. Green from the switch, red, from the little dongle that came with the RCA from the front camera. And then again, because this is the premium camera, a second red wire from the front camera. So we, now we need to attach all of these. Again, a small mistake, but I didn't need to attach the red lead from the front camera either, except for the small one that comes out of the video connection wire. As you can see here in this wiring diagram for reference, everything functions correctly, but according to the installation instructions, these are not necessary. After the fact, I went back and disconnected these wires and taped them off. The remainder of the wiring from the switch and the relay simply connects by matching color. I used the soldering butt connectors, made all the connections, and cleaned up the excess length with zip ties. Time to plug in our switch and test it out. Good, good. Starting, it says. Going to reverse, see if it goes beautiful. Back to park. Reverse. Woohoo! Look at that. Hey! Doop 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 doop. I'm really good at stuff. <laughs> with everything working great, reassemble your dash. Secure the front camera with the wedge shaped pad of your choice. Getting access to the nut is difficult. I had to loosen the top of my grill and tighten a little bit at a time. Last step is to cut some of the small wire loops next to the camera connection in the engine bay. So we're doing the vertical mounting here on the instructions. And uh, this is the normal mounting orientation to use as a forward facing camera, cut the white wire loop. Now I just double check this right now. It's, uh, I think it's set up to be a, a rear facing camera because right is left and left is right. So let's cut that right now. So that's done. Another option is to cut the green wire to remove the on-screen guidelines. For now, I decided to keep them. Cover up these wires with tape, tighten your grill, install your radiator support cover, and you're done. Well guys, it has been six weeks with the front camera and it has been working flawlessly. It's awesome out here off-roading, but also it's great just parking in tight spaces, my shop, you know, parking lots. It is a really nice thing to have. So if you have a 4Runner or a Tacoma, I highly recommend it. And sidebar, if you have a Tacoma and want to know how to install this exactly on a Tacoma, check out my friend Chloe Kuo's install video. I'm going to link her video here in the description and up in a card above. So until next time, everyone, please subscribe, turn on notifications, and check out the Overland DIY playlist for more awesome 4Runner videos and also videos about my awesome friend Chris, who's holding the camera, and his Chevy Colorado ZR2. So until next time, everyone, God bless, and don't forget to do it yourself. Every 4Runner needs a Tobis. Go pee, stay in the snow. Yeah. <laughs> Not in the mud. Wild Tobis. No, no, no. Ah, no, no. You, you bet. I hate you, Tobin. Toby, come here. Toby, you handsome little punk. Come here. Ow. Well, now you're. Oh, I hate you. I hate you.